Sure. So Thomas, tell me what you're doing here at NASIO and what you do with Symantec. Great, well, first off, uh, I want to appreciate the partnership with, uh, with Route 50. Uh, I wish our good friend Mitch were with us today, but it's Thank a pleasure you. to be here with you today, Alex. Um, so I head up government affairs for Symantec. Um, I work predominantly on state and local issues. Um, I spent about 17 years focusing on policy with the National Governors Association, where I worked with governors, their Homeland Security advisors, their CIOs and CISOs. And so my job in, at Symantec is to really help kind of keep an eye on the policy space. I'm not a technologist, but I'm more of a strategic policy thinker and um, you know, help, help advance the company's interest that way. So I realize we're just day one of NASIO, but have you seen anything or heard anything that you thought was interesting? Yeah, one of the more encouraging things that I heard yesterday at a session with some of the CIOs was the move toward improving procurement processes. For, for states, that's been a pretty sore subject for, for a number of years, where they just haven't been able to purchase the type of technologies or services that really kind of help keep them pace with the bad guys. And so they're beginning to speed up the cycles, they're beginning to speed up uh, contracts where they can have some flexibility that they can work with some vendors before just putting an RFP on the street. At, you know, I think one of the presenters, one of the CIOs yesterday said the, the day of the 500 page RFP is over, which is a really, uh, that's a great step. So I think there's still a ways to go, but it's really a great advancement. It, it sort of leads me to this, across the country, state agencies are migrating an increasing number of applications to the cloud. What do you think they need to be thinking about when it comes to security? So, you know, as we were talking earlier, you know, one of the issues with cloud is that it's just the next thing. When you look at a, an effective cybersecurity program, it really kind of covers the whole gamut. You've got mobile, you have desktop, you have data centers, you have now the cloud, you have I, IoT. And so when you begin to look at deploying and implementing an effective cybersecurity program, it really needs to cover the gamut, and the cloud is just the next aspect of that. And what you don't want is you don't want a widget here, a widget there, a widget there, a widget there. It gets costly, it's ineffective, it's, it's just not as scalable to put, a, to put an effective defense program in place. Um, and so when you talk about cloud, you want to make sure that whatever you've got, whether it's O365 or something else, um, that it fits into your overall cybersecurity framework and it doesn't need a lot of tweaking to do that. And so, you know, Symantec, we've just been recognized as a leader in this particular area around cloud and, and in particular around O365 with our data loss prevention, our DLP, uh, our DLP solution. We're hearing that states are finding it increasingly difficult to attract and hire skilled cyber talent. What can they do to address this hiring problem and keep pace with the shifting cyber threat landscape? So this really reminds me of the movie The Founder, in which Michael Keaton plays Ray Kroc, the, the, the supposed founder of McDonald's. And he's in a bank early in his career, and he's looking for a loan, and the banker's not giving the money because the banker's saying, well, you're absolutely broke. And he says, how is that possible? I'm broke, I've got 100 franchises around the world. And the banker says, I don't know, but you're broke. And in the movie, it's a movie, um, there's a gentleman there, and he pulls him out and says, hey, let me buy you a cup of coffee. And he says, here's the challenge you face. You're in the burger and the fry and the shake business where you should be in the real estate business. And he says, you don't even know what business you're in. And that's how Ray Kroc made his money. They made, McDonald's made their money by being the largest real estate um, developer and owner in the world. And similarly, you know, when you look at what states are doing and how they need to scale up for cybersecurity, they need to ask themselves, what business are we in? Are we in the cybersecurity business or are we in the government? continuity business operations center side of things. And so when you look at what that means from a state perspective, it means changing from CapEx to OpEx in terms of spending. It means developing business practices that allow you to build out a program. Um, so when you look at a company like Symantec, we are 13,000 folks in about 160 countries around the world. We operate the world's largest intelligence network. Um, and you know, we are in the cybersecurity business and states should begin to look at how they work with companies, not just like Symantec, but others, to manage security services. It's a better allocation of resources. That's great, thank you. To what extent can existing security technologies and disciplines help state and local governments address concerns around election security? So obviously election security is top of our mind right now for 2018, um, and more importantly, for 2020. And so we saw, you know, the federal government just released the HAVA grants. 
and states are beginning to use those to shore up some of their technology. Um, states have made great progress. They are not there yet. Um, and states, I, I, should, I should clarify, it's state and locals. And, and when you look at the separation of powers issues with respect to cybersecurity of election systems, it's very complicated very quickly um, because the CIOs, and we're here at NASIO, but the state CIOs and CISOs probably are not necessarily working with the state and local election officials and the security professionals because it's just a separation of powers issue. And so they face a number of challenges. Some of the things that they can do earlier, and I've uh, published a series of blogs on this, is they can begin to look at just some basic cyber hygiene, um, just some basic cyber hygiene practices. There are some free tools that they can use. We've got some of, some of the other vendors uh, you know, out there have that they can use, they can adopt, and it really will help. Um, the real issue is going to be 2020. Um, you know, I think we're going to see some issues, and uh, for 2018, I think, you know, if we can do more for 2020, that'd be good. It's a really a question about trust. And the more that the bad guys can undermine trust in the systems, the more damage they can do to our democracy. If I wanted to find your blog on that, where would I go? Um, you can just go to semantic.com and then type in election security blogs and you'll find it. Oh, great, thank you. Speaking of elections, with 36 gubernatorial elections this November and the potential of high turnovers in governor's mansions and state legislatures, what does that mean for continuity of all the programs currently in the works? So my, my guess is that there'll be anywhere from 22 to 25 new governors wow. uh, that will be coming in, uh, which probably will also bring in you know, as many as 20 or 25 new CIOs and CISOs. Sure. And those states that have the most effective cybersecurity programs are those that have them inculcated into their, their kind of, their, their overall business scheme, that they're not you know, one-shot initiatives, but that they are built in, that they are um, part of the fabric. They are established not by executive order, but maybe by legislation or by practice within the agencies. Um, the cybersecurity programs that have been stood up should not get interrupted with the elections. Um, and the bad guys are going to be watching for that. And this goes back to one of my earlier points, this notion of CapEx versus OpEx in terms of spending, how you begin to develop a cybersecurity program where it is part of business operations and not as a one-time purchase. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, appreciate it.